വന്ന് പറയും Dear viewers, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and a very good evening to you all. Welcome to our webinar 003 with Mr. Enamul Hawk, who is the executive director of Mahmouda Foundation. Uh, it is one of the uh, leading NGO uh, and uh, foundation in Bangladesh. Basically, they are working on uh, the different areas and definitely about social science, looking at how to implement and carry out the action research. With that note, ladies and gentlemen, I, would do, I don't like to take much of time because we are a bit late up uh, getting into this live today. Uh, we're extremely sorry for that. Uh, there are some technical issues that I was facing and that's, uh, that's why I couldn't really uh, come on time. Ladies and gentlemen, just to give you a brief idea about our speaker today, who is a very well-known and he's very dedicated, working for ages, more than 20 years. He's basically uh, collaborating various research with uh, world-renowned scholars, even from some of them from Harvard and different universities. Ladies and gentlemen, he worked with World Bank. He worked with uh, Brock in uh, Brock uh, projects. He also worked in different SME development, digital uh, leadership, and uh, many more. So I think without further ado, I would like to welcome our uh, today's speaker, Mr. Enamul Hawk. Uh, welcome to our webinar, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm very pleased to join here today. I thank Dr. Mahapuz and also Linkwit to giving me this opportunity to join here. Uh, at the very beginning of my you know, space, I would like to mention that uh, I am a uh, research practitioner. Our practice is based on the field and based on Bangladesh. So, what I will speak today, all from our experience, not from the book. And I'll, I'll not try to teach anybody anything, rather I'll share my experiences that I have gathered last two decades. So, uh, so far Dr. Mahapuz introduced me, uh, so I can now uh, go to the topic directly. Yes, uh, yes, sir. It, it was uh, wonderful knowing you, and definitely, I think our audience will be know more about you uh, because you have first-hand experience of doing action research, which is very rare in nature. Because most of the academicians, or <coughs> even for frankly speaking, most of the speakers we got so far is uh, we are basically handling our academic research. We are not very much into action research. So I believe many of us will be getting a lot of inputs from you how to handle how to carry out the action research in the ground on the ground sure you like I, I would be delighted to share my yeah would you like to share your Sorry? slides or would you like to share your slides yes, or, I, I, yeah, yeah yes 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 couple of slides i would like to share yeah yeah sure sure can, so can uh share a screen down there if you can see share yeah, screen I'm, I'm sharing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. sorry i'm I, sharing now i sure Hey, is it okay? Yeah, it's taking time. Oh, okay, okay, sure, sure, no problem. Right, while you are sharing, let me just uh, convey some of the things to the our viewers. 
Uh, dear viewers, ladies and gentlemen, we are watching um, our webinar three, which is on um, action research, how to basically learn and uh, know about action research, how to implement the action research. So we got um, a speaker today, uh, Mr. Anam Hawk, who is, who is having a first-hand experience of doing action research, and he has experience of over 20 years, uh, especially he is doing action research in Bangladesh, implementing various projects from uh, different part of the world, including World Bank and um, also some of the uh, top ranked universities like Harvard and so on and so forth. So we'll be having and getting some um, experience today and uh, we're just waiting for him to share the slides. I'm not sure why this is not taking. All right. Uh, okay. I think I, I should I just help. Uh, if you look at the share screen down there, share screen. Yeah. Yes. Then uh, share and there's an application window. Now up you can see application window, but you, you have to open the slide first. Okay. 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 Slide is open. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then you have to go to the share screen, then okay, share. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There will I, be think a now, I think now it is okay. Yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Yes, yeah, 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 all right. So, dear viewers, I welcome you all to this webinar. Today's topic is Action in Action Research, a Bangladeshi exposure. As I mentioned that what we have learned last two decades that I have shared today, First of all, uh, I'm first-hand practitioner of action research, and all of these research are conducting in Bangladesh. As you know, I'm alone is not doing this research. I'm a part of organization, so I would like to take a minute to introduce my organization as well. So I'm serving with Momoda Foundation. It is a non-profit organization, and it is, of course, a research-oriented development organization aims at creating a society with reduced poverty and inequality. The foundation has been working in both rural and urban Bangladesh since 2021, 2011. Uh, since then, we have partnered with many prestigious organizations across the world. I would like to mention a few, like Sophia University, Kyoto University, Gonunan Kendro Bangladesh, Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, India, International Growth Center, World Vision, IFMR Lead, India, ID Ejetro, Japan, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, USA, Women's World Banking, USA, Singapore Management University, Singapore, Copernic, Indonesia, the University of Tokyo, Japan, GLM LIC, Germany, Grand Challenge Canada, Canada, University of Oxford, United Kingdom, Graves, Japan, Southampton University, United Kingdom, University of New York, USA, Harvard University, USA, Sanem, Bangladesh, University of Kent, and Prag, Bangladesh. Besides these organizations, we have also worked with many scholars individually across the world. Now I am coming to this today's topic: research and action research. We all know that re and search is equal to research. So searching again and again is research. So in simple word, let us think about action research. Action plus research is action research. So if we say the research that is action oriented is action research, or the research which involves some actions, course of action, that is action research. From the history, we could come to know that the Kurt Lewin first coined the term action research in 1940. He described it as a process of planning, action, and searching. 
according to Ellen Ferris, a cycle of posing questions, gathering data, reflection, and deciding on a course of action. So let us look at the characteristics of action research. It is participant driven, it is reflective, it is practical focused, it is collaborative, it is context specific, a dynamic process, a plan of action, and finally it leads to change or improves the practice. Cycle of action research. First to choose a problem or find a problem, then designing the project design for solution, according to the design, the action. We need to take course of action, then reflection, the action we take, there might be some reflection and finally we need to capture the result for scaling up. The actions are uh, context specific, so it depends on what kind of problem and the action depends on the problem basis. That is some kind of physical action, some kind of behavioral action, some kind of you know, psychological actions needs to take up for this action research. In our cases, we, we had the experience to provide training, awareness, incentives, credit incentives, physical devices, birth registration, behavior interventions. While I will share my experiences, we, I will explain more about those. So like the, all other resources, data collection is one of the major part of research. So in our cases, we collect qualitative and quantitative data. For qualitative data collection, we use some tools like focus group discussions, key informant interviews, in-depth interviews, case studies, etc. For quantitative data collection, we mostly use survey tools and of course we use secondary data sources to collect quantitative data. A few of our pictures from our field, from the first picture we see there is one-to-one -one interview for collecting data. Second one, similar, data collection, one-to-one -one interview. Third one, data checking and entry in-house. Fourth one is a focus group discussion. Fifth one also a focus group discussion. And sixth one is the action in a training. In the data collection process, the first step is to develop a questionnaire. So we follow some steps like at first, the principal investigators gives some of the idea of developing questionnaire. With that idea, research manager and research assistants develop the questionnaire. This questionnaire is sent to supervisor for test by the surveyor in the field. Once it is tested in the field, the feedback is given through supervisor, research manager, up to the principal investigators. And this way the questionnaire usually finalized. After finalizing the questionnaire, we used to go to the field for data collection. This first task is started from surveyor. The surveyor meets the person physically for data collection. There is supervisor on the ground to check whether the systems are followed accordingly. And there is also so there is of course research assistant and research manager to monitor and supervise the system. And this way the data 
submitted to principal investigator. And from the principal investigator, a few portion or few percentage of data, like 4% to 10% data is given to a scrutinizer for rechecking and error checking. And then that feedback given to the principal investigator for finalizing the data. Usually in our practice, say for today we are collecting data in a field, by next 24 hours, the scrutinizing process has been completed and then this feedback again going to the field for correction. And third data collection is the telephonic survey. We all know that with the emergence of COVID-19, the whole world stuck, whole world locked down. So considering the situation, should we stop the process of our research or activities? Of course, no. So we did not stop our interventions. We did not stop our data collection. Rather, we have started telephonic survey. The questionnaire development is similar. Only the difference is the surveyor collect data through service CTO or some other digital platform. Our supervisor, research manager, and principal investigators have access. And the data submitted to principal investigators. Again, a few percentage of data given to a scrutinizer for checking. The feedback again back to the principal investigator. This way, the data cleaning and finalizing is done. Analysis and reflection. So usually in our action research, we make a couple of groups like treatment groups, intervention groups. Sometimes the treatment groups also more than one, two, even three. So there is an example that there's a population divided into two groups. So red one is the treatment group where the intervention is given and the Green one is control group where no intervention given. So after a certain period, there might be some change. And also in the control group, there will be some natural changes. And at the end, after a certain period, like six months, one year, two year, whatever may be the project duration, after the end of the uh, project, we make an end line evaluation. Why are we measure the difference? That is the impact of that action research. And this impact, we make advocacy to the relevant authority for the scale of action. Now I will give some real time example from the field. Example one incentivizing school attendance. Dr. Abu Sramchai, New York University and Dr. Kamuti Puji, Singapore Management University developed an idea that if the students are given with incentive, financial incentive and also financial penalty, there may be a chance to improve the attendance in the school. With this idea, the Foundation partnered with Singapore Management University and started this school incentivizing project. At the beginning, we find 68% attendance in the school. And within a six months, we found that the attendance is increased nearly 100, that is 98%. What intervention we took? We have given the intervention for every day attending the school, the students are given 10 taka. And also if someone absent from the school, he or she has been penalized for 10 taka. So this way, uh, we have conducted this school project two years. We found very satisfactory result that the increase of school attendance among the students is remarkably improved. And this intervention, of course, 
It was a RCT intervention, randomized trial and control methods are applied here. Like we chose three schools. Among three schools, we have divided the students into two groups. 50% students are taken under these interventions and 50% are not. And at the end, we have evaluated these two groups difference and we found a remarkable difference. Example two, hand washing behavior in Bangladesh. So the Harvard University and Mamada Foundation jointly taken up this research project. Dr. Sanchai and Rishman Hussan from Harvard University took up an idea that if we provide hand wash dispenser in the school and we show some motivational cartoon for hand washing benefits, there might be a good progress. Having this idea, we have started. We made three groups, one group control, no intervention. Second group only provided with the hand wash system. Third one, both hand wash and the motivational cartoon has been shown. So this way, one year we have continued and just after, just before the COVID, this project closed, we uh, yet to give the final result. But we see there is remarkable progress within the behavior change of students, especially the hand washing behavior. This has remarkably improved. The next one, role model to change attitude towards female labor force participation. We know a country like Bangladesh, a 50% population are women and who are out of financing financial activities. Professor Dr. Momoi Makino and Dr. Abu Shanchai developed an idea that we can change the attitude among the female of rural population that going to job field, they can change their lifestyle, they can improve their life. So having this intention, we design a project to change the attitude towards female labor force participation. However, we invite a successful woman, invite a successful female model from those locality who already been successful. And in front of the other girls, she spoke about her journey to success and that impressed those girls. This is, yeah, this is one of the ongoing pro project. So we are expecting that this will help to change the attitude among the rural people that yes, female can work in the offices, in the factories or any other places. Next example, universal birth registration to reduce child marriage. In a worldwide, to reduce child marriage, so many interventions are taking every day and ongoing a lot of projects. Many first time, Dr. Jackie Wahas from University of Kent and Dr. Abu Estrange of Florida International University developed an idea that, especially in Bangladesh, in the rural context, people do not have birth registration, especially the young girls do not have birth registration. So if we can ensure the universal birth registration, that might help to reduce child marriage. Having this intention, we listed 3,000 households having a girl's age 13 to 17 years. And we have divided these households into three groups. Treatment one, who are only getting awareness. There is a government toll free number where anyone can complain against this kind of child harassment. So we are giving this harassment through some sticker to their 
doorstep to their furnitures, even on their mobile phone. At the second row, we are those girls have not having birth registration. We are taking them to the union council, and from our side, we are issuing birth registration to them. Also, they are given the similar awareness information that you can call triple three for any incidents. And the third group is control group, where there is no intervention. This is also a ongoing project. We will come to know after June 2021 about the impact of this project. Testing the impacts of G2P payments. This is one of the largest research projects in Bangladesh, where 40 districts are included more than 50,000 samples are here. This project having multi-sector stakeholders from Government of Bangladesh, Access to Information, Department of Social Service, and from research side, Dr. Reshman Hussam, Harvard University, Dr. Benjamin Roth, Harvard University, Dr. Nandari Aligol, Harvard University, and Dr. Abu S. Shamsai, Florida International University. This is the research panel. And the funding organization is Peel and Melinda Gates Foundation. And Momoda Foundation, that is our team, we are working in the field to implement this project. This is really a good project in Bangladesh. The idea is, Old age allowance, widow age allowance, and disabled allowance are given by the government of Bangladesh. And this allowance usually are to draw from the state owned bank like Shonali, Janata, Ogroni, only from the Kopojala level. Where these age group people have used travel travel to risk there, like average 10.5 kilometers travel involved, average 70 taka cost involved, average six to eight hours journey involved. So idea is that if the system can be digitized, there will be remarkable progress that can help this group of people to reduce cost of their payment drawing, reduce their time, reduce their health hazard. We have so far completed four districts and the result is really remarkable. So next example is creating micro entrepreneur through freelancing training. The Oxford University came up with an idea Dr. Simon Queen, Mahmoud Miki, and Abu Shanchai, the together developed an idea that if the freelancer, you know, usually in Bangladesh, to enroll in any freelancing institute, it needs 12,000 taka at a time. For a rural student or boys or girls, it is very difficult to manage at the very first time. So, idea is that. If the project itself is given subsidies or that is income sharing model, how it works? So with the partnership of University of Oxford, we have conducted this micro entrepreneur through freelancing training. From graphics design and some other digital works they learn they are connected to the online income platform and they share 20 percent income for their training fee so it is so impressive that the rural people are now interested to enroll this kind of program so this is a few Examples from my side. So while working in this kind of action research in the field across Bangladesh, we find a couple of challenges. 
these are coordination among stakeholders, administrative complicacy, non cooperation of local elites, difficulty in maintaining PHRP guidelines. We all know that protecting human resource participants is one of the internationally recognized guidelines that we need to follow while conducting any interview or any research in any areas. Managing respondents. Budget constraints, impact of climate change. So these are the challenges we found in our field. So from the action research implementation, we have a couple of recommendations to respective authorities or respective persons like academician, researcher, philanthropist should come forward for more development research activities in Bangladesh. Young and talented researchers should focus more action research in Bangladesh. Non-resident Bangladeshi researchers should keep close eyes on action research in Bangladesh. And also government support to research work needs to increase. Bangladesh is a country of huge possibilities. So if all sector of people, all stakeholders come forward to take up the right kind of action research, there is a huge possibility of moving towards the sustainable development. I extremely believe that Bangladesh will move forward for the next step of development. Uh, this is a short presentation from my side. Thank you all. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Anamul Hawk. It was short but very informative in nature. Uh, I believe the one, uh, the audience that were listening to you uh, benefited and understand about the action research. Then I uh, would like to know more about some of the things because I, I personally felt very interested about knowing this uh, action research. Uh, we have one question from you. Uh, we take a uh, look at the question. Uh, I would like to ask Mr. Alam why aren't the projects you discuss too small scale? That is, do the action research have any impact on the nation labor? Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. Very good question. I would like to say, no, I, I mentioned those projects. Not all the projects are very uh, limited scale. I mentioned uh, digital G2P payments, which is a nationwide project, which involves 40 districts out of 64 districts in Bangladesh. However, oh, yeah. more than 50 respondents are involved in this project. Four stakeholders and 40, well, 50,000 respondents are involved. That really represents the national I don't know, statistics, I believe. And some other, some other thing. Uh, some other project like regional, you know, suppose uh, if I talk about the uh, child marriage, it is a district level research where, you know, 3000 population are involved. I, I don't think that it is, uh, you know, too, too uh, small scale. It is a good uh, scalable, you know, sample. But of course, the more the number, more the, you know, uh, representative uh, that is data we will, we will get. So thank you for the question. Thank you very much. I hope he, uh, he got the answer. We have a few yeah. specific questions to you. Uh, while I was listening to your presentation, definitely I was blown away because it was very informative and real. Because uh, being an academic researcher, what we always see that we have a contribution. We always say it contributes, but I doubt it does. But when it comes to action research, I, I really feel that it has contribution. But few of the things I, I always wonder, and many of the academic researchers wonder, is that yeah. intervention. When you mention about uh, one of the project uh, uh, for the school yes. attendance, you want to increase the school attendance, and the intervention was 
paying 10 taka yes, yes. who are coming to school and not uh, and uh, penalizing 10 uh, who are not coming yes. to the school yes so i was just wondering like when you take out the intervention for after some time after time one and time two yeah. when you take out the intervention does it really work for long run or is it just for a certain years what is your experience Okay, very good, very good question. Actually, uh, we have just completed this project in 2019. And, uh, you know, in March 15, the schools have been shut down. So we have tested only 2.5 months. And this 2.5 months was, you know, it was sustainable. It's no more intervention, but it was the, uh, the rate of barrenness was as the rise to one, that is 98%. But if we could continue, uh, the, that could be you know, much more uh, relevant to tell you that is at least one year we need to observe to tell you the actual result. Right. But yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I was also wondering, like, when it comes to intervention, so for example, paying money or putting up some videos, like for a hand wash project, you're yeah. putting up, um, showing up some videos. So uh, which one works faster and more effectively? Is it about money or is it about motivation uh, in Bangladesh perspective? And if you, and I'm sure you also had experience of or working with different parts of the uh, world uh, virtually and with other people. So which one, which intervention works, uh, I would say more effective in that sense? Yeah, yeah, actually in Bangladesh, uh, still the financial benefit is working more right uh we have we have uh, mr Azim with us who is working in the uh, world university of bangladesh we have many other people who are watching but we only allow few people to be in our uh, room mr. Azim, if you have any question about uh, reaction research uh i i guess you just were uh yeah we are we previously were experiencing some uh, technical issues that's why we are late about this live and all sort of things so, i think we have any questions Thank you, Professor Mahfuzur Rahman, and thank you, Mr. Uh, Anamul Haq. Uh, this is Mahmoud Azim, Senior Lecturer, World University of Bangladesh. I have a question. Uh, whenever uh, uh, we submit any paper to any conference, uh, conference or any, whenever we submit any paper to the journal, sometimes there is a question, uh, what is the validity, validity of your research or what is the validity of your methodology or, or something else? Yeah. So how can we improve yes. the validity? What is that? As a new researcher, I'm a new researcher. Okay, okay, sure. So in our cases, thank you. This is a very good question for in any kind of research. Validity is very important, of course. So in our cases, uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, that uh, while collecting data, we usually used to maintain the PHRP guidelines, protecting human resource participants guidelines. Secondly, we try to follow strict rules of taking the data while interviewing or while conducting telephonic survey or any other things. So the surveyor, supervisor, RM, everyone having some rules, having some roles to monitor the data collection process. And there is again, there is a scrutinizer who are usually checking Four to six, four to eight percent data on a daily basis. So our data, if we if we tell about our our organization, we try to ensure the data accuracy more than eighty five percent always. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, uh, IHM Mohsin asked a question that uh, the significant success in a school attendance project, have you been able to reach out to the policymakers to share the positive results to, and they have they taken any action as of today? That's a good question. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mohsin. Actually, as I mentioned, that just after the you know uh, completion of this project, the COVID emergence happened. So, as the schools are closed, 
So negotiating with any authority will not work now. We are waiting uh, till the situation normal. And of course, we will, we will make necessary advocacy with, with our agent. Thank you. Well, uh, if I add to that, uh, usually the project that you have completed, uh, since you have a range of experience over 20 years, so I'm sure you have completed many projects. So when it comes to implementing that nationwide, I mean, how do you get that response from uh, the policymakers? Uh, are they willing or uh, do you have any uh, evidence of saying that it was implemented in nationwide? Yes, sure. Uh, you know, we always think that, you know, policymakers mean government. Actually, sometimes, you know, non-government support is very essential. So we have a project training program for RMC sector workers, long-term impact. So in this project, we provide training to the uh, rural girls. And then we, we, after training, we take their migration risk. You know, a village girl, they are afraid to come to the city. First risk, where she will go, who will give the job. Third, who will bear the uh, monitorial expenses. So these are the risks. So our project overcomes all the three. And whenever we see that from the training, they are motivated, they are, you know, at the very beginning day of going to the factory, they can produce some goods. We are taking this result to the government owner. And by this time, we are affiliated with a few governments where we, we are sending these trained girls directly for internship. We are telling the government owner that you need not to pay three months. You just take her as helper. If she is eligible within 90 days, you can enroll her. If not, she will go back. And these three months, the project covers the expenses. So she is taking training free of cost and then coming to the city. We are connecting the job link and it is working. So this is, of course, a scalable uh, you know, example. We don't think that always the government will come up and uh, support us. The, the non-government sector has a, a lot of scope to uh, support the development. Excellent. Excellent. So th that is the way to go on. It's not about only government. It's also about um, and other NGOs and other policymakers who are also up for uh, making a change to the world and making a change to the ground. Uh, so uh, with that note, we also wanted to know about uh, the, the 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 way you treat the samples uh, because uh, yeah. in social science when you deal with like for me like academic research, uh, we do survey, we do, we do secondary data, we get uh, data from banks and all sort of things. But you cut you directly deal with the respondents, and yeah. not only for one time, you just deal with them uh, for quite some time, time one and time two. At the same time, you are also using some of the intervention. So, uh, yes. so, so it, it you know it, it gives me a question that whether that brings any ethical issues or do you need any ethical clearance when you want to address them or you want to take them as a treatment group? A control group is fine because they're, you're not touching yes. them. But when it comes to treatment group, uh, definitely you are dealing with them. Sometimes you are giving this uh, hand wash, for example, or giving money. So do you face any ethical issues or you need any ethical clearance when you want to conduct this type of research? Yes, of course, you know, uh, for conducting any kinds of research, especially for the American standard is IRB, we need IRB approval. And for the uh, uh, UK and European standard is uh, ethical approval. Right. So for, uh, for our G2P project, we have got IRB approval, suppose those People, we are working in the field. We need to complete this protecting human resource participants course. It is a course. We need to understand the guidelines. We need to face the exam. Then we need to achieve the certificate. And with this certificate, our principal investigators apply for this, you know, IRB certification. And once they are satisfied with our understanding and the uh, examination pass mark, they give the, you know approval and for UK and European standard it needs ethical approval say for for child marriage project we have got ethical approval from the University of Kent there is a board 
who have the authority to give this kind of approval right. and also also in bangladesh you know while going to the field we need to inform district commissioner we need to inform uh, uh general nirbahi officer we need to inform the chair chairman of the union that means all concerned are aware that we are working So how about the data Thank protection you. when it comes to data protection, right? The, 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 I would say uh, confidentiality, right? Because uh, I may not be yeah. willing to share my personal information unless you guarantee or, you know, that uh, you will be protecting our data and you will not be sharing. So how did the, yeah. how these people, then because the most of the people that you are dealing with, uh, you, you will find them not educated or even the child marriage. I think they are very young in nature. Even the one yeah. you handle school children, they are very, very young in nature. So how do you get their consent? Is 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 from yeah. them or from their parents or from the schools and how, how it works? Actually, those who are below 18, uh, actually, we conduct the interview from their parents. And at the beginning of our inter any interview, we have a consent form that we, we simply tell them that Yes, I am from this organization. Our project view is this. And then, uh, would you like to spare 30 minutes or one hour with us? I will ask you about this and this. If you are, uh, if you are agree, only then we will conduct interview. And for your time, you will be compensated with 200 or 300 taka. Are you agree? Once, once he or she said yes, only then we we'll conduct interview. Thank you. Uh, we also notice that you, you do you do uh, conduct interview one to one. You also uh, mm -hmm. conduct uh, FGD focus group yes. and yes. also telephone survey. So when you do all sort of uh, different techniques of collecting data for action research, which one you yeah. found more effective? Which one you found more effective? And uh, of course, the cost saving. You are getting. Uh, I mean, I would say that the data data are very true in nature. Actually, you know, one to one interview is more effective. And, but in case of focus group discussion, we only want to know some, you know, opinion. Where there is opinion involved, and then we gather eight to ten people together. Then we uh, try to ask some open ended question, and then they reply. But for, you know, in case of one to one interview, mostly quantitative question. So very rare, like one to two percent question is opinion. So so one to one interview gives more information and data for the research. Yeah, Mr. Adi, if you have any questions, you will have some other questions. Whenever you, you are designing your question here, yes. what is the process? Could you please explain? Oh, OK. Thank you. The process actually questionnaire it depends on the uh, you know while designing the project we know what kind of data we need. So whether we need to know suppose if we talk about uh, you know G2P then mostly we focus on their income. Mostly we focus on their expenses. Mostly we focus on their physical illness, how much money they are spending on their illness. This is a, a major focus. But whenever we are we are working on child marriage issue, then we are asking who are the decision maker for your uh, marriage of your child? Is it you, that is father, mother, guardian or, or the uh, village chairman? Our question pattern is like this. So. First of all, we all have all kinds of questionnaire. There is a uh, roster. We say roster. That is family household information, their basic incomes, their basic expenses, and then other question depends on the nature of project. At what kind of information we need to connect. Thank you. Right. Uh, I, I do have some other questions too. Uh, if time permits, maybe another few minutes, then we will go off. Sure. Um, sure. We notice that your work basically. Uh, I mean, most of the fundings are coming from uh, outside. I mean, from yes. the world. 
And we also noticed that uh, the top school in the world, Harvard, Oxford, and all sort of uh, universities, and even uh, Singapore uh, management universities. So these are the professors, these are the people who are, are very dedicated to know about uh, the population, about the uh, changes, or maybe they want to introduce some intervention to make some real changes. Well, when yes. it comes to our local academicians, do you notice all sort of things? Do you have any kind of uh, connections or you notice that we have also professors from different different universities in Bangladesh that we just have been uh, Yeah, we are trying to connect uh, all the uh, professors, scholars, those who are living across the world. We are trying to connect. I told you that uh, the Momoda Foundation is still with a uh, uh, small focus on the uh, research done, we should say still we are have, we are not in that much of you know, large scale organization, but we are trying to connect all people. First of all, last couple of years, we try to ensure our quality implementation. That already we have proven. That's why, you know, Harvard, Oxford, Singapore Management University, Sophia University, these universities are continuously working with us. Now it is time to you know, explore to others and so far you are living overseas i would request you to come and join us and let's see how we are working sure 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 we all will do we all will do uh, let me rephrase the question a bit uh yeah. i feel like the top universities the top class uh, business school or top universities are coming to uh do some action research in our country i was wondering yeah. how about our own universities do you see those oh, okay. kind of yeah, yeah. What I yeah, I got the I, I got the question. Yeah, right. So they are also you know conducting kind of researches, uh, uh, of course, action researches, but mostly you know say for one professor as an individual, I see. he or he or she is conducting, and also there is some organization. Of course, the professors are affiliated with those organizations. They are conducting. So it's, it's, it's not, not mainly about the institution, it's about individuals who are coming forward to work yes, with. Yes, many, many of the professors are also involved with some, um, some uh, you know, organization as well. Uh, as, a, as a last question, I would like to ask you to uh, uh, shed some light on the interview when it comes to telephone interview, right? So yeah. basically, how do you select the sample? How do you collect the number? So for example, the people that you are reaching to, and uh, yeah, or a mechanism of getting into these types of survey. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, uh, so within the COVID situation, last six months we have conducted twelve thousand survey. All those twelve thousand is over telephone. So first, first one was you know, Bikash agent. Bikash Here agent. was a, a Bikash agent. How you know uh, within the COVID situation, how their business is going? Right, and uh, to support them, there was the approach of providing nano loan, very small scale loan for them. Right. So this was, you know, collaboration with IAP Merle in India, Bank Asia Bangladesh, and Grameen Fund. Right. So now, now you easily could come to know that Bikash agent number is coming to us from Grameen Fund. This is this one way. No, I mean, and when it comes to oh, yeah, sorry. okay, yeah, okay. Ne yeah. Next, next, if I talk about uh, so with the just with the emergence of COVID from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they just advised us to understand the situation of those social safety net beneficiaries, those who are living, you know, under poverty. So. You know, we are already working with them, so they are database with us. So then, and it was updated uh, in last year, uh, September. So in the May, we easily could conduct the survey and the uh, racing out rate is 90%. After after nine months, the you know, racing out rate is 90%. No, uh, uh, what I was trying to uh, understand is that when it comes to the information, whether it is a phone number, whether it is a bank account number, and all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that is I'm telling that the basic, yes, of course, we might have a basic source of, you know, database. So right. then G2P, then if I talk about, uh, we also, 
conduct a survey of the freelancers. Right. Then uh, freelancers. Then we we have you know asked uh, to many of the freelancing organization, and we have collected that's okay. How many people you have given training? Give the list. We requested them, and this way, say for we have collected one thousand. And we could risk in case of freelancing, it has, it has a huge difference. We have collected 1000 number, and we could risk only 460. So these are the cases. Not all time we are risking, uh, risking rate is high. It depends on uh, that is the database, how much recent it is. Uh, I think with that note, we will be concluding our uh, uh, webinar. But before that, ladies and gentlemen, there are viewers who are listening out there. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you enjoyed the session uh, like I did. It was very much in action in nature, uh, a basic understanding about action research. And later on, the recorded one will be uploaded and you will be able to uh, watch again. Uh, so the, the way we look and look into the research, uh, especially in academia, so-called um, the research, uh, like uh, who are working in universities and all sort of things. Basically, our research are not translated into action. On the other hand, your research is very much in nature of action, and the methodologies are similar. The methodologies are similar, but implementation, uh, I would say, takes uh, a, a, a huge step uh, to do so, and of course, the funding. So that is what I think maybe the academicians are not being able to implement it because, as you said, the intervention takes a lot of, uh, 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 lot, lot of money, right? So just looking at someone and, and, and a, a year or six months or seven months or providing them some money or all sort of things to change their behavior, it does matter. And that is what we need to be uh, making a better world. Uh, with Note and thanking you so much for joining us and uh, sharing your thoughts. Uh, I would love to invite you again uh, with a specific topic to discuss more about action research. Till then, stay safe, stay blessed. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'll see you again in our next webinar. Till then, uh, enjoy our uh, current one and keep asking about the questions so then we'll be uh, finding a new uh, research person to, to, to come up with more research. With that note, I thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you all.